Howdy folks, I'm Autumn Witch and welcome to Bleeding Tree Gaming. Now, those of you who are regular viewers uh, will know that I'm working on a White Scars army. And today I shall be adding to their ranks. Now, the new Scout kit is really, really good. I mean, the old ones needed to be replaced. But, uh... There's an issue that I'm having, and that is that the, uh, if you look at the heads on the sprue, as nice as they are, they don't look very white scars. So, I'm going to try and find a way around that. I'm also going to be magnetising some weapon options to get the most out of the kit. So here we go. I normally start uh, by uh, building a sergeant or a squad leader or whatever equivalent. Yeah, I think I'm going to make him with this torso with the uh, with the cloak so he stands out more. I mean, when you look at the box art, this is really for like the, the sniper, but I want my uh, my squad leader to stand out and look pretty cool. So what I shall do is I shall assemble the body. Stick it on a base and then we shall look at various kit bashing options before we move on to magnetization uh, for the heavy weapons. So, awesome! Well, it would appear in uh, true Games Workshop fashion that the parts are all over the sprues to build just the one dude. I mean, I know from a design point of view it makes the sprues easier, but from a putting together point of view, ugh. Right, okay, I shall crack on. Look, I'm following the instructions and everything. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, well, I'm going to have a probably an accident because I always end up cutting myself. If you hear any swearing, it'll be because I was too lazy to bleep it out. Now, I've used all sorts of uh, plastic glue in my hobby decades. It's uh, It'll be 30 years next year, you know? Yeah. But this is the best. Not only is it a really, really good, thin plastic cement, it also has a little brush, so you don't need to squeeze and risk squeezing too hard and having a dirty old squirt all over the model. As plastic glue, as I'm sure you well know, uh, melts the plastic, and if you put too much on, it'll melt the parts of the model that you don't want it to melt. Right, here's the... Ah! Wait. Right. The only problem with this kind of glue is that it's very thin. So you don't get much actual tackiness whilst it's uh, curing. Uh, if it carries on pissing about, I've got some super glue. But yes, here we are. Here he is. Now, because he's a sergeant and... I've been in this hobby for 30 years. It means that it's absolutely compulsory that a sergeant have a chainsaw. I'm going to have to choose a bolt pistol for him. Aha! That looks good. Yeah. Now, in this kit, the shoulder pads are separate which makes things uh, a little more optimized when it comes to customization now is he going to have his sword like that or is he going to have his sword up i mean that is a classic space marine pose and why would i refuse that so now let's find some accessories shall we I want to do something with the helmet, so I've uh, 
got a few various heads because I know that, you know, they shouldn't all have to be of, like, East Asian appearance. They are one of the Space Marine chapters that is kind of uh, a generic ethnotype. Which is number one. Now this is a Reaver helmet, and I think it looks okay. And here is the standard Primaris helmet from the White Scars upgrade kit. It has a White scar symbol upon the forehead. That actually looks quite cool, but I kind of want them to, you know, stand apart from the uh, fully fledged Marines. Let's have a look at the B key. Interesting, but there is something familiar, something deep in the continuity of Space Marine law that states that scouts cannot wear helmets, which is ridiculous. However, even though my 3D printer is a little bit knackered, I need a new screen, I need a new print bed, I decided to grab some more ethnically appropriate heads for the matter. Here we are with a few. Yeah, I think I am going to go down this road. Now what I also did when I was 3D printing was print out some scout sized insignia shoulder pads. Now the um, the reason I did this was that the uh, transfers that are, are available for white scars are not exactly uh, small enough to fit upon a shoulder pad this small. So one that's been modified and built with the symbol attached is of great convenience. Good, now I need to do some mold line removal and some clean up, but it feels to me like I can crack on with the rest knowing exactly what I'm doing with the heads. Ah uh, yes, magnetization. Now this always struck me as a bit more complicated than uh, than it really is, and I've, I've done a video on it. Uh, before, but uh, for scouts, because they're a smaller model, it could be a little more uh, fiddly. So I start with a standard, uh, a central um, pilot hole, followed by a uh, a drilling with a bit that is exactly the same width as the uh, magnets. Here you see I'm using a already magnetized part to uh, make sure that the uh, polarization on my magnetized models is the same across the entire range. Uh, then I start to grab some of the weapons options. This kit has got a lot of weapons options, um, many of which can be utilized all in one game. So, uh, yeah, you can take, if you've got a squad of 10 like I have, you can take two sniper rifles and two heavy weapons, uh, which is a choice of um, a heavy bolter or uh, missile launcher, uh, heavy bolter is here. The um, the shotgun was my was my choice for the basic troops, and I magnetized a few in case I want to just do like an all and all, an all out rather um, assault force. So yeah, it's uh, it's quite easy. You just need to play around with it uh, as long as you can get the polarization right and. Um, weapons are like two-handed, like you see with, the, with this shotgun, with the missile launcher. Um, yeah, if you if you glue the hands to where they need to be, any uh, any gap that appears at the shoulder can be easily covered with the uh, the shoulder pads. I have uh, gathered a few bits and pieces from my bits box. We've got. Some very tribal looking daggers and pouches, which uh, I think will look quite uh, quite good. What I've got here appears to be some kind of 
fur collar. This is, I believe, from um, one of the Frostgrave kits. And the idea of one dude actually having a fur collar. Thus, actually look quite good. And it will also make him stand out as a squad leader, should I wish to deploy these folk as actual uh, five-man squads as opposed to ten. Now, uh, fantasy kits tend to be pretty good if you're going for a more tribal look, even with something futuristic like 40k, and especially with the white scars. A lot of these bits have come from fantasy kits. Um, quite a few from the uh, from some Frostgrave uh, soldiers and uh, wizards and witches and and such. See, I, I gave him the horn. <laughs> and this guy is getting a couple of daggers. Right, now, here we are, they are all assembled, they've all got their magnets and their tribal accessories. Now, the next thing to do is to paint them, which I'm not going to be doing here, but they will suddenly appear painted any second. If you want to see my technique, I will leave a link to the video in the end screen. Um, but, for now, I sit back, enjoy the beauty shots. I'm Autumn Witch, and I'll catch you next time on Bleeding Tree Gaming. Oh, like, share, subscribe. Be a darling. Thank you.